Hi, I'm Crafty Patty, and thank you for tuning in. In one of my past videos, I made this tote bag that falls into a nice little pocket. If you haven't seen this popular video, I will leave a link in the description box below for you. In that video, I did mention that I would show you how to use up all those scraps of fabric left over from your tote bag and other projects that you've been working on. So here it is. I've been making finger thumb pot holders. I use these handy pot holders almost daily. Sometimes large oven mitts are just too bulky and these work perfectly for me. Fingers, thumb. Great for lifting up a hot pot of steaming soup or whatever you're making. Or how about taking out those poached eggs from a hot steaming pot onto your plate. The big oven mitts are just too bulky to do that job. So stay tuned and I will show you how to make all these darling little finger thumb pot holders. I'm using two pieces of 60 pound paper and we'll just put those together nice and even and that will save us one more cut and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting a rectangle that is seven and three quarters inches by six inches. You can choose to use a rotary cutter which is my tool of choice because it's fast and it's even. But if you're not comfortable with that, then you can certainly just trace it out with a pencil and then cut out with just a basic pair of scissors. And I need to measure up seven and three quarters inches. And you can either take your pencil, draw through, and then use your scissors to cut or if you're comfortable with the rotary cutter. And we want a rectangle six inches wide. We're gonna keep these two pieces together and now come in and just make a point in the middle, which is obviously three inches because we've got a six inch width. So you're going to measure down two inches on both sides and to make a mark if you like. And now we're going to cut off those corners. Now you're going to measure in an inch and one quarter. You can make a mark. And one inch and one quarter on the other side. And now we're going to join up this corner with that mark we've just made. And we're going to make our next two pattern pieces out of this one. So I've just given you this for a visual so you know that you're cutting this whole piece. You're cutting two in fabric, you're cutting one in insole bright. I'll explain that in a minute. Cut one in polyfill. And these pieces you're cutting just two in fabric and two in fabric. This is the Insel Bright. It's an insulating material, ideal for like pot holders and oven mitts. And it's got a woven side on both sides and inside there's a metallicized, however you say that, film. And you'll be needing some polyfill. And this is obviously that comes in a roll or in a sheet. And then we can just cut out the sections that we need for our mitt. 
and you'll want a fairly thin version of this because we don't want too much bulk, but just enough to add a little bit of protection. So this is a great way to use up all your scrap pieces of fabric. Now for these pieces, because we're going to be sewing right sides together, bring your right sides together while you're cutting it, and you don't have to do that again later. We have all our pieces cut, and now we're ready for sewing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bottom part of our pattern piece, and we're going to sew along the larger edge. This is the smaller edge, this is the larger edge. And we're going to sew about a one quarter inch seam. And the same for this side, not the pointed edge, but we're going to sew along here one quarter inch as well. And the same for these two pieces. We're going to iron the seam open. And then we're going to fold it in half again. And this just allows to have a really nice edge on the top here, because you want your sewing edge right in the middle. Now we're ready to make the sandwich. This is how you're gonna make your sandwich. Place your first larger piece right side up, and then you're going to come in and you're gonna add the little pieces that you've just sewn together. Match that up with the bottom edge. And this one, match that up to the point. Now we're going to take this piece right side down, lace that on top. Then you're going to put on your insulate. There's no right or wrong. Both sides are the same. And then we're going to finish with the polyfill. And then just take some sewing pins and pin through all your layers, holding them together. And now what we're going to do is we're going to leave this section open. We're going to sew around, pivot, the point, pivot, this point pivot and back to the other side and stop. I'm going to sew with the polyfill down because I want to make sure that I catch all my material. So I'll just take out my first pin. Because there's a lot of layers in here, when you're sewing you might have to take out your pins, lift up your pressure foot, adjust Pull the fabric a little bit just to make sure it's all nice and smooth, and then continue sewing. I didn't use my quilting walking foot for this project because I want to try to keep these projects simple. You know, you don't want to have to be going out buying extra little attachments to do a little sewing project. But if you do have one, then I would suggest you use it for this project and it will help to walk a lot on the fabric and help it not to bunch up. And then just sew up until you've got your quarter inch seam allowance. Lift your pressure foot, pivot, and now we're going to sew across this edge here. Up to your point, lift your pressure foot, pivot, back down, 
and so on. Left pivot. Now you want to come in, trim right up to your sewn line, but don't cut into it, and take off those corners. And now go around and trim off your excess fabric as well. Now what you're gonna do is you're looking for where your insole right is. It's right there. And you can see all your layers of fabric here. You only want to take one layer of fabric and keep it to the same side as the insole right. And that's where you're going to turn it. So now I'll just reverse it and turn it to the right side out. What you can do is you can take the end of a basic knitting needle and come up inside and that will help you to get the little corners back. One thing you should be paying attention to is where is your insulate? Or actually, sorry, it's not insulate. It's what this particular product is insulate, right? It's on this side. So if you're going to use your finger thumb pocket mitt, that's where you want your insulate. So this is the correct way to have it. That's the way you want it. Okay? We're going to just flip this, all of this, and reverse just the side, because what we want to do is sew this shut. Okay, so back to the sewing machine. We're going to sew along close to the edge. We're now going to come in again and we're going to sew past that about an eighth of an inch. And now we're going to zigzag in between those two stitch lines. So here I've got it on my one for my width and we have it on one for my length. And on my machine, this is my zigzag. And then we're going to flip this right side out again. And there you have your finished thumb finger potholder mitt, meaning your fingers go in here. Your thumb goes in here and you're ready to grab onto anything hot and it'll protect your fingers and it's less bulky than a great big oven mitt. You get to use up all your spare scraps of fabric. Yay!